Welcome to our Good News program. Aren't you excited over our inheritance in the Lord? All that he has left for us as true believers. And today we're going to learn more about his home, his peace, his life, all of these, and his name, what he has given us in his name. So today we're going to be reading just from the lessons where we have been in John chapter 14, in my father's house are many mansions. So he told them he was going to leave. He said in verse 19 of chapter 14, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye shall see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And then in verse 28, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come, you might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, now that is Satan, and hath nothing in me. That's in Ephesians 2, 2. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. So once again, in chapter 16, in verse 28, he says, I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice that we have these privileges that Thou hast left with each of us as true believers. Help us to live the abundant life that Thou hast given to each of us and give us a burden for those around us that have no hope. Bless this word today as it goes forth. Give us a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Help the word of God be revealed to every person that is listening in such a way that they will behold all the treasures that thou hast for us in this book. And for those that don't know thee today, save them, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we're talking about his home, his home that he is preparing for us. This is the most wonderful John chapter 14. He says, let not your heart be troubled. So once again, we come. He's anticipating their loneliness. Now remember, he knew, he tells them not to sorrow. We just read this. You see, this is why he says, if you love me, you would rejoice because he's going to the Father. This is important. And he's anticipating the loneliness in the world without him. Has he not called them to leave homes? Now listen at this, those of you that are serving as a servant of Christ, to leave homes and kindred for his sake. Christ is to be first. And he reveals the provisions he has made for them in his father's house. His father's house. We can call him father now as true believers. That's the only way because he says this in his word. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So here we have his father, his own heavenly home made over to us as his home. He proceeds to reassure them as his going away that his purpose is to secure them a home, to go to prepare this home for them, to be in a position to welcome each of us into this home. 
Have you ever thought of these wonderful, wonderful gifts? Have you ever realized this? When you've lost a loved one, that he's waiting there for them. This is the height of his provision, the gold of his thought for each of us. And then before we get to John 17, 24, we want to know what his desire is for every true believer. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given to me, this is all true believers, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. It's his desire that we be with him. This is a greatest gift that where I am there ye may be also a heavenly home of glad reunion with no separation. No separation forever and ever to be with him. How eagerly how believers awaited his coming in full fulfillment of his pledge to take them to his home. This is where we will be with him. Thus, to be with him forever and ever. Have you ever looked when a loved one has passed on absent from the body and present with the Lord in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, to rejoice that his sufferings are over. And the sufferings of this world cannot be compared to the glory that he has for us. And with what confidence have they given up dear loved ones in death, knowing that he was receiving them and to his prepared places, his heavenly home. Think of that when a loved one is going to be with the Lord. And then we see, once again, absent from the body, present with the Lord, no pain in death, only the glory that God has for us. No time element is involved. No time element is involved, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Have you received this bequest? Are you holding this heavenly home in prospect? Are you thinking about this? Are you living in expect expectations of its joy? Are you living in this? Are you looking for his promised coming to usher you into his eternal enjoyment with him forever and ever. You see, we get a new body. We get a new body. It is not affected by gravitational pull, time, space, or matter. When we reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, we receive a body of light. Are you looking forward to that time? I pray that you are. This is what he has for us. We have his humility. We have his love. We have his home that he's prepared for us all free. And now his name. His name. Can you imagine what this is that he's left for us as true believers? His name. Now you know that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, only those that are truly his, he will give it you. He will give it you. Now this is John 14, 13, and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see, you can't say you love the Lord unless you are obeying him. So his name, what a bequest. His reference to his going from them, because I go to the Father. Because I go to the Father. Now this is John 
14, verse 12. Because I go to the Father. This is deity. This is divine. Have you ever read the messages and re thought about a divine message that cannot lie, that is given to us as true believers? This is absolutely overwhelming to those that don't know the riches of the inheritance of Christ. Hitherto, he says, have you asked nothing in my name? Hitherto, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. You, have to, you see, this is why people don't have because they don't ask. And when they ask, they leave away not believing because that is one of the things we must believe to receive the promise. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. John 15, 7. So here we have, hitherto have you asked nothing. How much time do you spend praying to him? Hitherto have you asked nothing has meant nothing beyond this earth level to his disciples at this time. But now that he has finished his work, he lived on the earth, he died, and he's risen again, he can say, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Ascending to the Father, victor, victory. Now we're going to come to this victory one that is the most amazing one. And believers do not know what it is to live the victorious life, but this is what he wants for us. Ascending to the Father, he has victory over sin, over death. He has received a name which is above every name, Philippians 2, 9 and through 11. Philippians 2, 9. Now, you see, once we know what wonderful things that he's given to us, but think of the greatest person in the universe has given those to us. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That he, this is above every name. Why do you want to be like someone on earth that can't offer you anything? It will all be taken from you at death except what Christ gives to us. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. To the glory of the Father. Isn't this one of the greatest things that I have his name? I can call him Father. It is that name which is perfect in life and triumph in death. That name, Jesus Christ. Glorious in ascended splendor. The greatest thing before his disciples saw him taken up in this Shekinah glory cloud. Glorious in ascended splendor, occupying a position far above all rule, authority, and power and dominion, and every name that is named most wonderful person in all the universe, all that he is and has, made over to his own in the privileged use of his name. The privileged use. Since prayer is based upon relationship, he has left his name with his own, ours to use, because we bear that name in intimate kinship. Have you received this bequest? What use are you making of it? Have you proved its power in your own personal
personal problems. Have you used this and the needs of others? We're to pray for one another. Have you used this and the world's sore distresses? His name. And if you don't have that intimate relationship of or by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. You don't have his name. You don't have his love. You don't have any of these that we're studying. And then his peace. Oh, his peace. Oh, this is the most wonderful thing to know the peace of God that passes all understanding. John chapter 14, 20, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. This is true peace. My peace I give unto you. At not as the world giveth you, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave with you, but lest th they would think to find the experience of peace anywhere other than in him, he adds, my peace I give unto you. This is his peace. Definitely and specifically a bequest, that which belongs to him, and he is leaving with us. It is something that is his and is now made over to us. His peace. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you, nay, the world may promise you promise after promise, riches, prosperity. Well, but what it really has for us is opposite of what the Lord gives us. These things in John 16, 33. Now, this is what the world gives. You must know the difference. John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Victory for every true believer. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. But I have overcome the world. There is nothing that we are facing that I cannot have his peace. His peace, not ours. This distinction cannot be too strongly stressed. The peace that was real, that faded under the shadow of the cross, that remain unaltered under the severest strain known to history. It is this tried, this tested, peace that he is bequesting to us. The peace that proved itself unfailing under the sting of injustice and ill will, under the awful stress of the world's sin. Your sin and my sin. The suffering of Calvary under the agonizing suffering of our sins. The, should such peace can never prove inadequate to our personal needs. Could such peace ever be inadequate? Never. Because no one has suffered like he did no man taketh my life from me, I lay it down of myself. Why don't we want to reach those in the world with this peace? I wish I had a home for every child in the world that is not loved to teach them this truth. Have you received this bequest? Are you living in the calm of its conscious, conscious every minute procession? possession. I have this. This is my possession. This is from him. Has it taken the fever out of your spiritual veins? 
is it proven in us what it was in him? Is his peace your peace? You see, Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Now, this is an absolute wonderful, wonderful prayer verse. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because we trust the in thee. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Everlasting strength. His life. John 15, 1 through 8. Our Lord now proceeds to make provision for his own during his absence in their most basic need that of life itself. You don't have life without Christ because that's eternal life. That's forever and ever. They are to be inseparably attached to him. When he is gone from them, they are not to be under necessities of living without him, but rather in daily dependence upon him. Daily dependence. He who has been with them is henceforth to be in them. To be in them. You see, this is the joy of knowing I have the abiding presence of God. I am the vine and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purges, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word. You see, you don't know any of these things unless you know the word of God, which I have spoken unto you. Now I want you to study this and read how many times it says abide. Abiding in him means to be in complete fellowship with him at all times. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. So what does he say in these lessons? We are whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Verse eight. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Bearing fruit. Are you bearing fruit for the Lord? Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31b. Now this is what we are called to do as true believers. He who had been with them now is going to give them the Holy Spirit, the believer and the Spirit. This is absolutely one of the greatest gifts that we have as true believers, and this is John 15, 26. But when the Comforter will come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye shall bear witnesses, because ye have been with me from the beginning. You see, there's no other God. There's no organization. There's no church. There is no cults. All of these, all of these things that are happening today are turning you from this inheritance and keeping you from the true and living God. And you must know these truths. Under this figure drawn from the realm of vegetation, the vine and the branch, so familiar to all of us, our Lord is providing for us a oneness with himself in perpetual, undissolvable identification, abiding presence of God. John 14, 16. John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter 
that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And also, verse 20. And you need to teach this, you teachers, to the children. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He who came to be identified with us in his incarnation is now causing us to be identified with him in his glorification. We're going to be glorified with him. A oneness that imparts the greatest reality and particularly to his continuing relationship with his own. You see, if I've got sin in my life, that right there, if I have sin, then my fellowship is broken and my prayers will not be heard. You see, this is why the Holy Spirit is given for holiness. And sin keeps me from the blessings. A oneness that he wants us to have to his continuing relationship with his own. We have our position in him, abide in me, that's our possession, our power to bear, bear fruit, and I in you. You see, we don't have any power apart from him. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. No possibility of bearing fruit apart from the Spirit of God. For apart from me ye can do nothing. Have you ever thought about that? Everything I do, he gives me the power to do. So are you telling others about Christ once again? We forgot to mention our New Testament. And if you love the Lord and you want to bear fruit, I ask three questions of you. Are you bearing fruit? Is your ministry a joy? Am I glorifying the Lord? All of these you understand. This is for every true believer to pass out to reach those that are lost. You can bear fruit by passing these out. Only after you are a child of God, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Do you want victory? Do you want fruit? Obey his word. <laughs>